Hello, everybody. My name is Calvin Schmidt, and I am thrilled to present this year's Perennial Hero Award. Uh, it was created to honor older individuals who are actively contributing to create positive societal change and serve as role models for people of all ages. Dr. Laura Karstensen, the founder and director of the Stanford Center on Longevity, wrote about this term in the Washington Post saying, the symbolism it connotes is perfect. For one, perennials make clear that we're still here, blossoming again and again, and it also suggests a new model of life in which people engage and take breaks, making new starts repeatedly. Perennials aren't guaranteed to blossom year after year, but given the proper conditions, good soil, nutrients, the love they need, they can go on for decades. You know, for me, it is really, really aspirational. So I'm thrilled to present this year's Perennial Hero Award to Jerry and Jim, Jerry and Jim Taylor, that is, for their inspiring second careers as advocates for Alzheimer's disease. Uh, the research in this area, care and support for people with the disease and families as caregivers. Jerry was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease in 2012. And since that time, the couple have spoken to over 10,000 people around the United States and in Europe in order to educate others about the disease. They've not only reduced the stigma, encouraged participation in Alzheimer's clinical trials, but the New York Times published an acclaimed 12-page article, Fraying at the Edges, as a special section of the paper on May 1st, 2016, about Jerry's journey with Alzheimer's disease. In addition to their speaking engagements and other educational efforts, Jerry and Jim are actively engaged in several national Alzheimer's projects, serving on executive steering committees and FDA panels to review drugs and devices representing the needs and perspective of patients and family caregivers. They have also been a supportive, very supportive of the Alliance's Talk Nerdy to Me program as students, teachers, and now ambassadors. One of my favorite programs that the Alliance offers. Their most recent project is co-founding Memory Advocates Program, known as MAP. It's a peer-to-peer -peer support organization to assist newly diagnosed individuals who have cognitive issues and their care partners. Trained volunteers will bring emotional support, information regarding online resources about the disease, information about local support services, and assist clients in finding a clinical trial if the clients are interested. A New York City pilot partnering with New York City's Caring Kind and NYU Medical School neurologist will hopefully begin as early as next year. Jerry and Jim, it is so wonderful to be with you today and to present the Perennial Hero Award to both of you. Big, big, big congratulations. You know, you both went through the Alliance's Talk Nerdy to Me training, first as participants and then as expert speakers. You know, what did you learn from the training? You know, how has it helped you as patient advocates? Calvin, first let me express our gratitude to the Alliance for this award. We really feel deeply touched and honored that uh, given the outstanding work we know that the Alliance does, that to be considered and to be awarded the Perennial Hero Award is, is a high, high water mark for us in our work, so thank you. Recently, Jerry has uh, experienced an increasing challenge over the last two months even in the, the short-term memory and communication so that finding words and expressing herself is a little more difficult than it would have been even a year ago. So I may do more speaking. Believe me, she's perfectly capable of speaking for herself most of the time, but uh, I may end up doing more of uh, the speaking today. Jerry uh, has done research in her career. She was a 45-year healthcare professional in New York City, developed programs uh, to keep disabled uh, individuals in their home for as long as possible and ran a long-term care institutions with a dementia unit. And so she's quite experienced and knowledgeable and before that had done research. But for me, it was really uh, 
the opportunity to learn particularly about the FDA drug development process and the uh, safety requirements that accompany the development of drugs and devices to advance uh, cures for and disease modifying treatments for Alzheimer's was very, very important. But actually the main thing I took away, Calvin, was something different. We had two or three, three or four different disease representatives in the room. We were Alzheimer's and there were several other diseases. But one particular lady uh, had founded a national support organization for chronic pain sufferers eight to 10 years prior. And other chronic disease sufferers in the room uh, gave testimonials to what a tremendous gift she had been to them. And this lady did not have a medical, did not have medical or research experience. And you know, I sat there and, and I thought, boy, Given what she's done, and given the need for that, the people suffering from Alzheimer's, wow, you know, there's no reason, especially with a partner like Jerry, who has the medical background and the research experience, there's no reason that she and I couldn't do that. That was a Rubicon for me. If you had to give some advice or some nuggets of wisdom to someone that was newly diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, what would you say to that person? I think what um, I would say to people is um, don't hide. You are a val valuable human being and you have all of the rights that we all have. And as we go through this path, um, it becomes our path and it becomes our reality and it is valid and it's appropriate and it's good for the rest of the world as much as anybody. What we try to tell people is that yes, the late stages of dementia and Alzheimer's are difficult, but you can have many years in which you can live fully and passionately if you decide to manage your disease rather than suffer from it. Jerry's been diagnosed for eight years, and those have years have literally been enriched by knowing that she has Alzheimer's disease because we live more purposefully and more passionately. So we, we try to encourage individuals to learn how to manage Alzheimer's. And we think there are four steps that are, are very important in that. And first, educate yourself about the disease. Understand what the stages are, what the accompanying symptoms are, because knowledge is power and relieves anxiety as the mind begins to change. Secondly, uh, something that Jerry has been outstanding at is developing what we call living strategies. In other words, as your mind becomes a little slower or more forgetful, Develop the techniques that allow you to compensate for that declining memory. The third thing is develop a passion for life. Find something you love to do and do it passionately. And then finally, uh, is to consider joining research in an Alzheimer's drug trial. Today, less than 1% of Americans with Alzheimer's, less than 1% participate in clinical drug trials. And I think this is a crisis because we are dramatically slowing the opportunity to find a cure and or a disease modifying treatment. So we strongly encourage people to consider joining trials. Very, very clear. You know, Jim, as a, you know, as a caregiver and partner, anything else from your perspective that you would give advice to others on, on, you know, facing what you're, experiencing on a daily basis? I would encourage care partners to acknowledge that they have uh, an accompanying emotional set that needs to be addressed and, and honored uh, over some amount of time. But you can't let that grief continue. The stages of grief are well known and uh, take care of those, nurse those, but then pull out and realize that you've also been given an opportunity, a very great opportunity, to grow and enlarge yourself as a person. One is to realize 
how important your attitude and positive outlook is for the person you're taking care of. Two, it's developing patience. Also, one of the things that Jerry has taught me is not to be what I call a helicopter uh, care partner. It's like a helicopter parent who does too much for their children. Every time I do something with the best of intentions, Calvin, that Jerry can do for herself, it takes away her self-regard, her dignity, her self-esteem. And so many care partners with the best of intention end up helping their, their partner stay on the couch as opposed to helping them do the things that they can do and even new things, which is much more exhilarating for them than helping them to decline. The word that comes to my mind is uh, inspiring. I can feel your, um, uh, your love and caring about others in a selfless way, and then also the challenges that you're faced with, um, the insights that you've shared. It just, you know, for everybody listening uh, and watching today, you can see why, uh, Jerry and Jim, you are so well-deserved of this um, of this award. Um, I'm humbled to be able to uh, present this to you. Big, big, big congratulations uh, to, to you both and your many future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you.